Okay, we're at Felitos. Time for another walking vlog. We're downtown Georgetown on King Street. Approaching uh, approaching Regent Street on King Street. And what I want to do today is talk a little bit about business, doing business in Guyana. As you know by now, one of the things that I come back to Guyana to do is to set up some businesses that are going to be based out of Georgetown. And since I came back, I set up four businesses, I registered four businesses. And what I'm going to discuss for you today is how you can set up a business, how, can you, how you can do a business do business in Guyana, particularly in the current climate of oil and gas. So with the rise of the oil and gas sector, there are increasing business opportunities, some of them directly related to the oil sector, the oil and gas sector, and some of them are auxiliary or supportive industries. And so what I want to do is to discuss how you as a Guyanese living abroad can um, get a slice, get a part of piece of the action in the growing business climate. Right now I'm going past the new mall, the Sharon's Mall. This mall was set up uh, a few years ago and I came back to Guyana. Uh, this is one of the new buildings that was still on the construction. Sharon's Mall and it's located here on Charlotte Street, corner of Charlotte and King Street. And Charlotte and King Street, this is of course the corner that you have the courts, the Georgetown Magistrates Court. And at the end of Charlotte Street, you have the commercial registry so that's where we're gonna start if you want to register a business in Guyana let me just flip this camera around so you can see where the commercial registry is located so yeah the building ahead the building straight ahead at the top of Charlotte Street that is the western end of Charlotte Street is the commercial registry and the land registry and over here is the Court. So the registry used to be located on the ground floor of the court. As you can see, there's a renovation going on. They moved the registry across the street. Across the street. To this new building. You can see looking west of the sun, so it's probably not that. Right here at the corner of uh, Avenue of Republic and Chalice Street. Right there you see that's the commercial registry and the land registry. So that's the commercial registry. That's where you go to register new buildings. So the very first step is to register the name of your bill, your business in this building and I did that as soon as they came back. There's a form you fill out where they ask you for some specific information about the name, the location, and the of business. And you pay 5,000 Guyana dollars, which is about 25 US dollars to register your business. And that guarantees that your name, the name of your business will not be taken by anyone. So up the street where we just came from that. Sharon's building on Charlotte Street. Sharon is the name of that new mall. It's not a very big mall. There are a couple of stores on the ground floor, open stores, and offices on the top of the right, like lawyers' offices on the top two floors. So like the first two floors have some businesses, and the top two floors have offices. So yes, I'm saying that is the first step, and I'm gonna switch. I'm 
gonna switch it back again so that you can. Yeah, so like I said, that's the first step in registering your business. And right, first step in starting your business is to register the name of your business at this business registry, commercial registry. The next step, of course, is to start doing business. And the big part of the biggest part of business doing business in Guyana is in fact setting up your or getting your customers. The customer acquisition is uh, an important an important part of the problem you're gonna have to solve. And my advice if you want to do business in Guyana is that you find products, you sell products that are at a certain price point. It turns out that there is not a large market for really expensive items. But if you sell products that are say five or ten US dollars, then you're likely to get a large buy-in, you're likely to get participation, you're likely to acquire customers much more easily. Whereas if you want to sell more expensive products, you'll find that you're gonna to have to market to wealthier clients and your customer acquisition pace of customer acquisition could be rather slow if you're trying to reach only wealthy clients so in the beginning you want to pick a commodity an item if you're selling that is um, product, an item that is within the five or ten dollar range. If you're selling services, of course, that's another story. But again, your price will determine how much customer buy-in you get, how many customers you manage to acquire at some pace, at some rate. So, customer acquisition is your next challenge. As a part of customer acquisition, there is the Center for Local Business Administration. The Center for Local Business is a service center that is set up by ExxonMobil in Guyana. It's located on South Road. So it's located on South Road and They run a portal for tier one contractors for Exxon. So if you want to do business with the tier one contractors at Exxon, people who have been contracted by Exxon to do their um, work, then you register, you can register your business at the Center for Local Business Registry and hopefully become visible and part of the selection process when they're looking for subcontractors. So you can be subcontracted for services, whether it be food services or logistics, you know, shipping and moving items or even construction, electrical services and accommodation and so on. So that's one of the things you can do with your business once you've registered it. You can also <laughs> register it with the Center for Local Business. Uh, which brings me to the fourth step in the process of doing business. And that means documentation. So it turns out that the Center for Local Business Administration, the Center for Local Business in Guyana has a website that requires detailed information about your company and the more information you can provide to that portal the more likely it is that a contractor will select you for a subcontract with ExxonMobil so one of the things that they're big on is documentation so you will require they will need you to document your management um, arrangements, your financial management, your health and safety 
occupation health and safety, as well as your quality assurance and quality control of your business. All of these documentation um, items will be needed, will be necessary if you're to compete for contracts with ExxonMobil. So the thing to do is to document your business as soon as possible. You know, you ought to be able to provide documentation for your finances and how your finances are managed, your taxes and how your taxes are paid, and your management structure, how your business is arranged, you know, your chain of command and so on. And you also need to document your health and safety um, procedures and your quality assurance. So that's number four. So I've actually gone through the process of registering for the center at the Center for Local Business uh, on their, at their portal. And my experience is that they're not always very helpful. So I went in there, for example, a few days ago to get some footage of the actual location inside the building. And uh, so I can give you some feedback on, you know, what it is like. They have staff in the offices and they are very helpful, but I found that there's some kind of distance that Exxon seems to want to maintain with uh, the public, probably because uh, they want to control their image. They don't want um, to tarnish their image or their reputation. And so they tend to be very uh, protective, very defensive about information. So I can point you to their website and to their videos where they describe and explain what it is, how you go through the process of registering for the business. But my experience is that they're not really a very friendly, very customer friendly place. I don't know anyone who's actually gotten a contract with ExxonMobil through this portal. I haven't gotten a contract with them. But if you want to do business with ExxonMobil, that is in fact the only way you can do so in Guyana by registering with the Center for Local Business. So guys, that's what's up. That's what's happening in Guyana in business. Next I'm going to talk to you about taxes and how you obtain your uh, TIN in Guyana. You're required to have a number assigned by the revenue office, which is your TIN number. If you want to buy or sell anything, you're going to need one of these numbers. I'm going to explain to you how do you acquire how you obtain TIN, how you pay your taxes, how taxes work in Guyana. Now, if you want to see more content like this, click like and subscribe. And as I said, now in the new structure of Google and YouTube, uh, subscriptions and subscribership is way more important than it was in the past. So if you want to see more content, you want to see this channel succeed, then I'd encourage you to succeed if you haven't done so already. Click like and click the notification button so that you can see immediately when new videos are posted to my channel. And if you want some specific videos to be made, you want to make a request for a specific video to be made, then you should also consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. I have that in my description in the about section of uh, this page and in the description below. Later!